We had no idea that we were going to run into the largest poisoning case in the history of the United States, to the largest wiretapping case, and the largest immigration fraud that had occurred in the United States. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining 10 cult leaders who faced justice. But I am demanding that you do the job, and that you tell Jerry Don Lundgren, this fellow right here, that he's guilty. For this list, we're looking at some of the most famous cult leaders who actually faced some kind of repercussions. What do you think of these stories? Let us know in the comments below. Rajneesh and Ma Anand Sheila Spiritual guru Rajneesh led a controversial life in his native India before moving to the United States in 1981. In many ways, this place is unique and we are going to make it more and more unique and beautiful. He was the founder of the Rajneesh movement, with his second in command being Ma Anand Sheila. What can I say? Tough titties. The group was responsible for two major incidents. In 1984, they committed the first bioterror attack in America by contaminating salad bars and poisoning hundreds of people. At the county health department, nurse Diane Kerr contacted everyone who fell ill and discovered they had all eaten a salad from one of 10 local restaurants. The following year, they attempted to assassinate United States Attorney Charles Turner, who was looking into the commune. Investigations proved that Sheila was the main perpetrator behind the attacks, but both received punishments. Rajneesh was brought up on, quote, conspiracy to evade immigration laws and kicked out of the country, while Sheila was given four and a half years in prison. I don't want to discuss for only one reason. I have served 39 months in prison and that should be enough. People cannot punish me rest of my life. Tony Alamo. Born Bernie Hoffman, Christian evangelist Tony Alamo and his wife Susan founded the Alamo Christian Foundation in 1969. When I got saved and I, and I met Sue, it was so exciting. And then when we got married, I says, God has got to love me more than anybody in the world. The cult was founded in Hollywood and had a heavy presence in the entertainment industry. In fact, Michael Jackson can be seen wearing an Alamo jacket on the cover of Bad. The name was eventually changed to Music Square Church, and its followers were required to hand all of their money to the organization. Alamo's ministry grew into a multi-million dollar network of businesses, where followers worked for their self-proclaimed profit in questionable ways without pay. The IRS came after the church in 1996 and found that Alamo was using the MSC for tax evasion. In 2009, Alamo was convicted of transporting minors for nefarious purposes and given 175 years in prison. And in 2009, he was sentenced to 175 years in prison for transporting young girls across state lines. He died in 2017. Ervil LeBaron. This man founded the Church of the Firstborn of the Lamb of God, which served as a bloody offshoot of the Latter-day Saints. Now, Ervil not only had 13 wives and over 50 children, but he also used his own family, including his own kids, as assassins. He was a staunch supporter of blood atonement, a controversial idea within Mormonism that argues for the killing of eternal sinners. LeBaron's first victim was his own brother, Joel. Ervil broke away from Ruth's father, starting his own church, adhering to the concept of blood atonement. It was blood to pay for sins. The first to pay was his own brother. A spree of killings occurred throughout the 70s and early 80s, with LeBaron's church being responsible for many deaths. Dubbed the Mormon Manson, Ervil and his family were suspects in over 40 murders. His victims ranged in standing, from fellow Mormon leaders to his own henchmen and daughter. LeBaron was eventually convicted for ordering the death of Mormon leader Rulon C. Allred. He was sentenced to life in prison and died in 1981. After he dies in jail, people keep on killing for him. He killed up to 25 people after he died because he left a sort of hit list and they kept killing. Jacques Thériault, a Canadian cult leader from Quebec. Jacques Thériault started the Ant Hill Kids in 1977 and went by the prophet name Moïse. He began to kind of preach to his followers and present himself as some kind of an Old Testament prophet, which gave him an enormous power over uh, the people that had gathered around. Thériault watched his followers build a commune in the mountains of Quebec and compared them to ants on an anthill, which is what led to the cult's non-traditional name. Thériault was a totalitarian leader who subjected his followers to extreme mistreatment 
and banned them from speaking to each other. Because of their remote location, Terrio could continue his campaign of terror with impunity. He also strengthened the cult's numbers by impregnating the females and fathering dozens of children. One harshly treated member escaped the cult in 1989 and contacted authorities, leading to the arrest of Terrio. When he was arrested, three of his wives remained at his side. But for the others, the spell was broken, and they testified in court against him. He received life in prison and died there when his cellmate stabbed him in the neck. Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh An Indian cult leader, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh is the current leader of the religious sect Dera Sacha Soda. He is what Indians call a god-man, one of many, and Singh's case has shed a light on how sect leaders conduct themselves and how they're presented in the Indian media. He is a very controversial figure in his native India, and he's been prosecuted for castrating up to 400 of his followers. But that's not all. Ram Rahim faced a flood of legal troubles in the early 2000s, which eventually resulted in his downfall. He was airlifted from the court to prison. The authorities were well aware that 100,000 of his devotees had flooded into the city of Panchkula for the verdict. In 2002, an anonymous letter accused Ram Rahim of committing sexual assault. This letter was published by journalist Ramchandra Chhatrapati, who was subsequently killed on Ram Rahim's orders. The cult leader was later found guilty of Chhatrapati's death and two counts of sexual assault, resulting in a life sentence. Paul Schaefer. Christian minister William Branham influenced many cult leaders, including Jim Jones and Paul Schaefer. The latter is a German man who started the colony of Colonia Dignidad in Chile. Outwardly, the so-called colony of dignity appeared quite pious. But in reality, it was a strictly guarded sect with corporal punishment, slave labor. His followers were often horrifically abused, and the colony became linked with the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Pinochet would send his enemies to Colonia Dignidad, where they in turn would be tormented and executed. Colonia Dignidad worked closely with the dictator. The CIA also believed that infamous Nazi doctor Josef Mengele was at one point being hidden at the compound. Schaefer began facing serious charges after Pinochet stepped down in 1990, and he disappeared in 1997. He was later found in Argentina and convicted of sexual assault. He was given 20 years in prison and died in 2010 at the age of 88. Paul Schaefer died in 2010 in prison. He left behind a terrible legacy of shattered and destroyed lives, of many unanswered questions. Jeffrey Lundgren. Born in Missouri, Jeffrey Lundgren was raised in the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was excellent at memorizing verses in the Bible, and more importantly, verses in the Book of Mormon. He studied it endlessly. After returning from the Navy and fathering children, Lundgren began interpreting scripture in a non-traditional manner and started a cult in Ohio. The group lived out of a farmhouse and gave their life savings to Lundgren, who proclaimed himself a prophet. He proclaimed that he was a special prophet who found secret messages in everything from the Book of Mormon to the design of the temple. These messages revealed that Kirtland would be the site of the second coming of Christ. He eventually developed a hatred for member Dennis Avery, who lived in a separate residence and saved money for himself. On April 17, 1989, Lundgren killed Avery, his wife, and his three children. Finally, after months of nervous anticipation, Jeffrey Lundgren announced that the moment had come to cleanse sin from the group. Their bodies were later found by the authorities, and Lundgren was arrested in connection with their deaths. He was given the death penalty and executed on October 24, 2006. Shoko Asahara. Back in 1987, Japanese man Shoko Asahara created a doomsday cult known as Om Shinrikyo, meaning supreme truth. The self-proclaimed guru who was nearly blind founded his cult in the mid-1980s. Asahara predicted that Armageddon would occur in the 1990s and told his followers that they would create a new world. The cult quickly attracted attention from the law, leading to the Matsumoto Sarin attack of 1994. Followers of Om Shinrikyo released an aerosol of the toxic compound in the residential area of Matsumoto in the hopes of killing three judges. When a legal dispute over one attempt to buy land seems destined to go against them, Asahara takes this as a personal affront and orders lethal retaliation against the judges in the case. The attack spelled the end of eight people and harmed more than 500. 
Nine months later, they orchestrated another sarin attack throughout the Tokyo Metro in 1995, killing 14 and injuring over 5,000. Their motives for this were numerous, like bringing about the apocalypse and distracting the police from an impending raid on the compound. Asahara was arrested and ultimately sentenced to death. He was hanged on July 6, 2018. Keith Raniere. Nexium took advantage of people's desperation and crafted a cult. On the surface, Nexium looked like a self-help organization that hosted personal growth seminars and helped people reach their fullest, quote, potential. Nexium has its own lingo. Students are taught about overcoming disintegrations to become more potent and less suppressive and avoiding people termed parasites or luciferians. It attracted hundreds of members, including the rich and influential. However, various exposés were written about Nexium, arguing that it was actually a dangerous cult. It sounds like a horror movie, what you It was a horror movie. It was the most inhumane, horrific way to treat anybody. This was proven in subsequent investigations, as the likes of human branding, forced labor, racketeering, and numerous sexual offenses were uncovered. And it was all headed by a man named Keith Raniere. He was arrested in 2018 and convicted of numerous crimes, resulting in a prison sentence of 120 years. This morning, vindication for victims of so-called sex cult leader Keith Raniere. Keith Raniere will not be able to uh, to victimize people anymore. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Charles Manson Perhaps the most famous cult leader in American history, Charles Manson was a failed musician who started the Manson family in the late 60s. Living on Spawn Ranch in California, the family began to believe in an impending race war that would bring about the apocalypse. To outsiders and filmmakers, Manson's ranch was what the 60s was all about. Free love and plenty of LSD. But it would soon turn much darker. The Manson family killed nine people throughout the summer of 1969, including actress Sharon Tate. Her death generated enormous publicity and made Charles Manson a household name. Manson ordered his longtime lieutenant, Tex Watson, and two of his lovers, Susan Atkins and Patricia Krenwinkel, to break into the Tate Polanski home and kill whoever they found. While the subsequent trial acknowledged that Manson didn't directly or expressly arrange for these slayings, the leader was nevertheless brought up on first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder charges owing to his influence over the cult. I never told anybody to do anything other than what they wanted to do. He spent the rest of his life in prison and died in 2017 at the age of 83. He leaves behind a legacy of depraved murder.